Which should I trust? Quora or Flutter? Oh, I'm Singaporean. And that was the start of me creating a pull request. And you might be thinking, must I need to solve some bugs or some complicated code to be accepted to the high standards of the Flutter GitHub repository? Well, first of all, Flutter has more than one project. And second, not all of the pull requests were technical. And mine was one of them. So the situation was that I was scrolling through the Parallax documentation and I saw the example that they have put out, which is basically a list of the different attractions from the different countries. And one of the countries that they propose is China. And the attraction is Singapore. And Singapore is not a place in China. So as a proud Singaporean, I had to do something. And if you have an issue with anything in the Flutter website, you can scroll up to the top and you'll find an icon button usually beside the main header that looks like a bug. And you know what this bug icon button does. This will redirect you to the Flutter website GitHub repository issue section. And this issue was not technical at all, just mainly error in general knowledge, specifically geographical knowledge. And the changes I did was not on my IDE. It was actually on the GitHub page itself. However, this was not an issue for a Flutter developer from the Flutter team to resolve. It's just some simple code and text changes. Usually, you file an issue when you don't have the capability to resolve it or you might think it will take a long as time. However, I did a pull request. So you usually don't create a pull request as you have other priorities. You're not capable of resolving the bug or it will take a long as time. However, my priorities was to defend my Singaporean pride and I'm capable of resolving this simple issue and it did not take me a long as time actually. So with these three conditions met, I made a pull request and it was all done at the website itself, github.com slash flutter website, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, I went to the source code and at the top right, you can see there is this pencil icon. This is where you can edit the source code and make a pull request. So I went down, I used my big brain to solve this issue and clicked on the proposed changes button. And that's how easy it is to create a pull request without downloading the repository, going through the different steps to make the website work and such. So moreover, if you have not contributed to any of Google's open source stuff, you have to sign a contributor license agreement or CLA. It's just like a terms and conditions. I don't know what it does actually, I just signed it. And you have to wait for the approvals by the maintainer of the project or the contributors of the project. Usually a Flutter team member for the Flutter website. So if you want to escalate this pull request to be merged, the Flutter team actually counts thumbs ups as an indicator to an issue. So as this concerns my nation pride, I call upon my fellow Singaporean Flutter Telegram members to thumbs up this pull request. Yes. And after three grueling long days, the pull request got approved. Now you can call me an open source contributor. And it has not been much yet, but it has been approved though. So in essence, not all pull requests are code. It can be as simple as spelling mistakes or even a geographical mistake. Therefore, if you think adding a statement will clarify a method in a package or you have a better way to explain a concept, try and do a simple pull request. You never know your request might get approved and might get merged. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want some more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down if you have done some pull requests in the Flutter repository or any of the Flutter projects. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.